Hi everybody, I'm Adam Del Monte. Welcome to the third uh, exclusive video for Strings by Mail. Today I'd like to talk about the thumb. The thumb is sort of the finger that, eh, well, eh, you know, people think you just play a thumb once in a blue moon as a bass note or something, and we don't really pay enough attention to the thumb when it comes to both teaching technique and practicing technique. So I'd like to dedicate this entire video just for thumb. Thumb Awareness Week, okay? Now, um, so of course, uh, we have rest stroke, we have free stroke. Those are the two basic strokes, of course, that we have both in classical and in flamenco. However, in flamenco, the thumb is uh, very, very developed in terms of its usage, uh, its dynamic range, uh, it's a variety of techniques, of course, when it comes to al sapua, uh, which is this kind of technique. Okay, I'll break it down later and show it to you. Um, and, of course, when it comes to rasgueado. So, here already we have at least four different uses of the thumb. Um, so let's talk about the more basic ones first. Um, now, the subject of the thumb, of course, is, is, very, is a touchy one because the thumb is the one finger that, is, that really varies m much more than any other scenario uh, from player to player. The, sh the size of it, the shape of it, uh, the, 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 the type of nail that one has, um, whether it's, it's a hard nail, a soft nail, a medium nail, whether it's far from your uh, you know, cuticle or very close to your cuticle, all those elements, and this is true for the fingers, of course, but in the thumb, it, it really, the, the contrasts and differences are much enlarged. Um, so, really, I'm obviously addressing hundreds and thousands of different uh, players uh, here, and of course, it's impossible to find one way that will suit one size fits all. That's totally not my style. Um, so I'm, in, in, attempt, in an attempt to try and uh, find underlining universal truths that hopefully most of them will apply, uh, this is what this video is about. So um, the hand, the right hand, needs to have a little bit of an arch, right? Um, and the thumb needs to be, of course, a little bit slanted, right, at a 45 degree angle, that's the ideal kind of position, right, and play, moving away from the fingers so that they don't clash. Um, so this position is all good and, and fine when we're talking arpeggios, right, or just general sort of free stroke playing, counterpoint playing, uh, free stroke th with a thumb, uh, you know, and the thumb, of course, plays the odd note here and there, a bass note. It's not too busy. So when that's the case, um, this kind of stroke, of course, is perfectly fine. Okay. And this is true for classical, and it's also true for flamenco. Although in flamenco, the, the usage of rest stroke is... Uh, happens on a percentage way uh, level much, much more than, than free stroke. Um, but in terms of the, the, the angle, it's uh, in terms of the, 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 the angle of the actual finger, the actual thumb, it's the same. Except for, of course, this little variation. When you're doing a rest stroke, you're going to bring your wrist down a little bit and kind of drag the string down. So like that, you're actually uh, using, making good use of gravity and lowering the resistance. I, many times when I teach flamenco to classical guitarists, they have their, their thumb in, in the free stroke position, and it's much higher, and it's ideal for free stroke. However, when you try and do rest stroke in this position, it's, it's impossible because there's way too much resistance. So in order to create some relief and release, in the angle, you have to lower the thumb in such a way that the release from the string, you have both the ability to engage the string with 
with your with your thumb, with your with your nail, everything. But the angle is such that the release is much more available to you, right? Much less resistance. So um, let me show you um, an exercise that stimulates the fast twitch muscle fibers in your in the muscles of your hands, specifically in the thumb. It goes like this, and uh, by doing that, we're actually taking care of two issues. Uh, we can we're also working our left hand here, so and, and working on our extensions. So here's the exercise. <laughs> The next time around you can open up, you can do the extension between the first and the second finger. And if, when you do that, make sure your thumb is behind the middle finger. Not the first finger, but the middle finger. And that facilitates this extension much better. So, um, <clears throat> let's discuss another little, actually very important detail. And that is, um, for me there are two or three different thumb angles. In other words, whenever you're playing with a thumb, and it's just a, it's it's used as a bass note, right? As one single note to be the bass for a harmonic um, passage, such a such as a, um, like this falsetta, for example, in flamenco, right? <laughs> arpeggio and then they have another hit and then you have a hammer on the left hand relieves the right hand and then you have another hit and then you have five notes all because of one hit but hammer ons and pull offs in the left hand so this is a, a much more relaxed usage of the thumb and therefore there's no issue uh, with the just the classic angle of playing like this right because you have plenty of time to plant the the, the your thumb right underneath the nail to get the kind of sound you want and that's it in other words it's very different from uh, playing an entire melody on the thumb like get a different kind of sound I modified the angle of my attack um, were I to play it with this angle it would sound something like this right there's sort of a scratchiness to the sound it's not as clean that's because the approach at high speed this angle doesn't give you time um, to find the right placement uh, right under the string because the flesh gets in the way because it happens very quickly but if you're only playing thumb like a melody and, and, and you're repeating the thumb over and over and over to play a melody you want to really guarantee a full nail contact on the string in such a way that the flesh doesn't interfere and create sort of a double bump, if you will. You're going through first through the flesh, then you're clicking into the edge of the thumb, and then you're releasing. And that makes this nasty clicking sound that you don't really hear it when you're playing one note at a time, and then there's an arpeggio or a hammer-on, as opposed to when you're playing consecutive thumb notes, one after the other, then you really do hear that clicking sound. So, to avoid that, um, and here is a disclaimer, by the way, because this this angle, right, a 45 degree angle of the thumb, is the natural position and is, I would say, completely harmless, um, right? However, when you're doing this, in order to get the sound I was just talking about, with it's both in flamenco, whether it's strong and intense. <laughs> Right, 
that's a sort of a crisp, strong sound that you get. As opposed to, that's kind of a little bit dirty. As opposed to a much fuller sound, right? Um, the issue is, is that in order to get that sound, you have to angle your thumb quite aggressively um, against the string, like almost 90 degrees vis-a-vis -vis the string as opposed to 45 degrees. So this intensity of the angle, uh, I would say don't practice it more than 15 to, 15 to 20 seconds at a time. And then take a breather. And then another 10 seconds or 12 seconds and then take a breather. Especially if it's your first time. And I mean that. Be very gentle with this new angle because this new angle, again, this depends on whether you have a long thumb or a shorter thumb. If you have a shorter thumb in proportion to your hand, then, you're, then it's actually easier to do this. But notice the extremity of the, of, the, of the wrist here. In order to produce that sound, this is, a, again, this is a conscious sacrifice that I'm making. Uh, knowing that it hurts a little bit, but right away, number one, I, I don't stay in this position for very long, and number two, right away you relieve it with some kind of rischiato or whatever. Um, but don't play like this for hours on, on end and just think, oh, I'm practicing and then, you know, you have pain. So be very careful with that. Be mindful that this angle is kind of aggressive. And again, um, even in flamenco, if you use an aggressive and intense and fast uh, thumb passage, if you will, um, you're only going to do it for five seconds, four seconds. I mean, how long does a passage last of one particular me mechanism, right? So again, the danger isn't so much in playing it throughout the flow of your playing, but practicing it for a long period of time without any breaks. So that is a clear distinction. So um, having said that, there is kind of a middle ground for, 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 for the two. Namely, is kind of, and it involves uh, resisting this last joint here, a little bit, right? And so that you can, you're you able to maintain the 45 degree angle, but instead of rounding your thumb completely, naturally, the way it would, right? You actually resist it just a little bit, not too much, because then again, you're going to get a lot of tension here. We don't want that. And so again, you have, it's, it's kind of a compromise. This is the extreme angle. This is the angle that's only good for one note at a time. And this one, which is literally in between the two, but maybe favoring the 45 degree angle a little bit more. And it's about maneuvering this last joint here by finding the contact with a string in such a way that you like the sound that you're getting. So in other words, this is sort of a thin sound. First mechanism I was talking about, which you know, one note at a time is okay, but if you do many, you start to hear the, the funky clickiness, right? You go from here and you just ever so slightly notice how I'm just resisting just a little bit the angle here in such a way that I'm exposing the nail a little more, a little more nail, a little less flesh, but still maintaining these, maintaining this angle. crisp sound and you're not hurting yourself as much so this is a good um, intermediary uh, phase in practicing the thumb um, before you go all hardcore with this kind of uh, 90 degree extreme angle let me just show one more little exercise before we go and that's again a very very simple one and it's just great for, as a warm-up actually uh, before you do the one I showed in the beginning you, can, you should actually start with this one It has 
just the right amount of repetition, but at the same time, the, the release from crossing the strings sort of offers a feeling of release and continuity in your motion, which is a great little warm-up for the entire uh, thumb. So, uh, again, remember, practice slow, practice mindfully, and have a great one.